and more we have children going to the prison. It is a failed, it is a product of a failed government. It is a product of a failed state. Okay. It is the reason why you see children being massacred. But education is free. How can you say that our policies are weak? Children are supposed to be in school. If a child cannot be in school with a hungry stomach, the parents of that child, the family is not a unit. You don't expect the child to, to study in one piece. The community where that child comes from is not a, it's not a harmonious community. You don't expect that child to, to, to even to afford the free education because even free education needs to be afforded by going there. Okay. A child cannot study under such circumstances. Our society is disintegrated. Okay. Our families are disintegrated. Okay. How then do you, are you able to mold the future leaders of tomorrow to study? You cannot because the society, our society now is made up of people who are more of armed robbers, people who are more of thieves. Because even the public sector itself is made of people who are embezzlers. So you will live in a society where moral decredence has gone to zero. We live to a, in a society where values, people don't talk about values, people talk about wealth, what you have, what you don't have. What this man knows, whom this man knows, whom he doesn't know. There is no intellectual, honesty. individual in honesty. So because of all of that, we are bound to see that society reflect on our children. We are bound to see that the children are going astray. Drugs is the order of the day. Why? Because these children are not able to support themselves psychologically because of what they see in their communities. After you met uh, yeah, Ms. Mr. Eswa, yes, I, 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 you comment on what he has said. I want us to come out of this newspaper review talking about the tribute that has been paid to late uh, Gigi Rawlings. What can we remember about uh, Rawlings? Uh, Rawlings is um, one of the president of Admired was ever wrote Ghana. Before I comment more on that, I want to come back with your permission. Please go on. To come back to what uh, Barista Mele said a while ago, and he tried to narrate some brief history of uh, the union between um, Southern Cameroons and La Republic. I think if one of the reasons why we are where we are now is because of the history. And we cannot go forward without our history. It's very important. I'll permit or please beg on you to give me two minutes so that we clear the air a little on that. Except my history failed me. Now, he said these two factions that's La Republic and British Southern Cameroons came together in 1961. Wonderfully accepted. As a matter of fact, on the 11th of February 1961, it was a Saturday. Elections were organized in Boya. Okay. As to whether British Southern Cameroon will achieve her independence Nigeria. by joining La Republic or by integrating with Nigeria. We had two political leaders there. Endeli, Imaru Mbelale Fafa, Endeli, popularly known as Emil Endeli, born on the 10th of April 1916 oh, in Boya. Now, help us this, we these this two persons, Endeli was for the KNC. Jongo Foncha was for the KNTP party. Now, one person was for integration. That was Endeli. He wanted British Southern Cameroon to achieve independence by joining Nigeria. Another person was for reunification. Right? right. That was Foncha. Now, I, I, I take a break. And Hold on that reunification. Now, on that day, over 3 million Southern Cameroonians voted in favor of reuniting with our Republic of Cameroon. Some people think that election was weak. That's their opinion. Commanded. That's their opinion. No, it's not, it's not the, documented. The, the story, the story that. talk of the role that Foncha himself, John Wood Foncha, and, and John Wood Foncha and uh, Estimuna and Gomjoa played to, 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 to facilitate the process. I agree with you. I agree with you. That's politics anyway. Now, my problem now is that reunification. Okay. That word reunification. In English, that arrow is a prefix. Now, to reunite simply means that 
the two parties were first of all one. Right? That would be debate yes. for another day. Fine. Please. No, Let, let's let's go to, to yes. that would be debate so, for another day. Yes. I beg I really beg on you. Yes. I, I will have to shorten okay. it there. I, I let's let's I, talk I, I about the there. tribute to JJ Rowings. All right. Thank you. Thank you for cutting me short. I I'm happy that you did not allow me make my point. No, today. at least, uh, Mr. Ishwa, it, it, you, should be, you should be kind enough to say that we have given you three minutes and it's you okay, were still well, For Rollins, I think uh, when he was elected, I personally admired him as a person. I admired him, his physical morphology motivated me. If I was somebody that just by seeing him, you know that you have seen a president, he had that charisma, the qualities of a leader. And for the short time he ruled Ghana, I want to believe, and from evidence, he did a marvelous job. Because the short time, some people quote him as a power monger. He took from 1982 to 2000. It's quite a long time. Well, as far as some other presidents are concerned, as, as far as some other presidents are concerned, that's a very short time. Especially in Cameroon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but take note that there is a country nearby, Pitura Guinea, the president took part in 1979, 12 October. I think October. we have diplomatic so, ties, and we might not jeopardize on that on this planet. So I'm, I'm just like saying that the head of state of Cameroon is not the oldest president in Africa. Okay. It's true that he's been in power since 1982, but it's not the oldest. And nearest neighbor is older than him. Okay. So back to Rollins, uh, before 1979, Ghana was known as a mushroom country, had a series of uh, coup, and uh, when Rollins finally took over in 1979, he was looked upon like he was to follow the other process, but he, had, he was mad of the uh, high rates embezzlement that was taking place in former Ghana. We remember Ghana must go when Ghanaians were split over Africa because of the poor governance system in their country. But Rollins is remember, even though he came from a military background, having trained as a pilot, he came and uh, give, gave hope to the people 17 years after he wanted to hand power, hand the power for two years, and discovered that the leader that he entrusted still had those genes of, um, I mean, embezzlement, and he still stepped in. In 1982, for example, an international report uh, tack rulings for crime against humanity because he was known for extrajudicial killings, especially for well-known uh, government authorities that were corrupt. I want to ask you, having discussed with uh, one of the opposition leaders of Cameroon, Kawala, in her various meetings, he personally I mean, boosted Kawara Mura to come back to her country and fight the rights of the people. Do you think Rollins was somebody that could inspire change that is so wanting, wanted in Cameroon? He did. Okay. Of course, one of the persons he inspired is the Kawala, talking about the formidable lady. Okay. He, she, she's a, she's a, a very hard nut to crack okay. in the political scene in Cameroon. Nobody disputes that. You see, military takeovers in Nigeria, in, sorry, in Africa, uh, it's not something which is new. It happened in Nigeria and all over. So it's not something which is new. Now, when you, as you rightly said, there is a, uh, there is a popular saying that a prophet is known in his hometown. Okay. That hometown, I take Rollins as a person, Ghana to be the hometown. Now, when Rollins took over power, you just said it a while ago, nobody disputes that. There was serious embezzlement, mismanagement of funds in Ghana. But when he came, he tried to stabilize things and, and did that very, very well. I've said very, very well. I've not said excellent. Money democracy in Ghana. Yeah. Now, when he left power, you agree with me that things started going back the way they used to be. Yes. That was why he decided to step in again to regularize issues. And whether, in my own opinion, I think he's one of the best presidents Ghana has ever had and will ever have, except otherwise proven in the future. So I think it's a very, very big loss for Ghana and the African political scene as a whole. And after you, Mr. Eswa, Barrister, definitely I know you like a human rights fighter, somebody who's at the forefront of challenging uh, talks. I want to put to you, uh, what tribute can African democracy uh, draw from a uh, ruling's uh, I mean, leadership style? The, the, the first one is that uh, JJ Rollins is a selfless leader. He, he is one who believes in the accountability of leaders, servants of the people and not masters of the people. He, he, he is most of the time termed to be the Sankara of Ghana. That's very correct. Okay. You know, Africa mourns a great man. He, is not, he was not only loved by Ghanaians. His works 
what he did and all that he achieved was being seen all over the African continent. He is a child of Africa. He is Af an African hero. So, we, we, I usually, when I see someone like him, I try to draw such inspirations and I try to jealous what he has done for his country as opposed to what our leaders are doing in our country. You know, he ruled Ghana with integrity. Even as an ex or emeritus president, you could see videos of Rollins controlling traffic in the streets of Ghana. You could see him driving himself around the city. That is to tell you that this is a man who left a clean record. He's not a man who wanted to cling to power forever and die in power. He is a selfless leader. He is some, he's a humanitarian. He feels the people's pain. He goes to the nooks and crannies of the city. He sees what his people are going through. He doesn't sit in his high horse in a 2D. He does not... A 2D is in Cameroon. <laughs> uh, yes, he okay. does not sit in, in his high horse in a 2D. Okay, okay, okay. He has become a famous statue. Yes, so he does not ride in his limousine heavily guarded with armored cars around town. He is a man of the people. He goes close to the people all the time. He implemented financial transparency in the system in Ghana. And that is why today you would not see Ghanaians doing mean jobs around the African continent. But Neither do Cameroonians do. Cameroonians do. Proof of that is to show you that uh, some, is it a month ago, Cameroonians were repatriated from, from America, you know, from the USA. Cameroonians, if you go to, oh, hold on, let me finish. If you go to the passport office in, Camero, in, in Yaoundé, that's when you know that the wish of every Cameroonian is to leave this country. That is to tell you that nothing works here. The youth, especially the young persons here, it is difficult. But it's the same system that you have survived in it. Uh, that is correct. A few of us, a few of us, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, a few of us, I have refused a couple of times traveling abroad for greener pastures because I tell you I'm working a career here, I'm building it, and I believe that we can build Cameroon. But the truth is that you cannot be telling some other person, it is not every you that will be, will be telling that story. Because some, some of us might have been blessed, we might have been privileged to be where we are, but that is not the picture of every youth. Okay. It is not the picture of 50% of the youths in this country. Right. So when the country, when Ghana got back to its feet, Ghanaians that were living in Cameroon, all over Africa, they went back to the country. And for a country to go back to its feet, especially an African country, it means that transparency in the management of finances has been instituted in that country. Cameroonians are all over the African continent and Europe and America. That is because our resources are not being managed genuinely. That is, that is it's still the reason why the, the common man in Cameroon suffers. Money is in the hands of the political few who embezzle the money indiscriminately. Some of them even go scot free. Sometimes you even hear they have been sent to jail, you don't know the whereabouts of the money. Declare your assets, people don't want to declare your asset, their assets. Article 66. Article 66. 66. So all of that, you know, puts us in a situation where. We envy Ghanaians. Ghanaians are living well in their country now. So at, 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 at the end of the day, we have lost a patriot of Africa. Okay. We wish that our leaders here should emulate such examples of leadership, servitude. You are a servant of the people. You are not a master of the people. Let our leaders leave their high horses. Let them leave their palaces. Let them come and see what the common man is going through and then they'll have a picture of what our country After you, Barrister Mele, the whole war was taken aback following the um, violence perpetrated on people lawyers in uh, a court of premier instance in Douala, Bonanjo, and uh, why so many political leaders, especially of the opposition party, are decrying uh, such a gross violation of human rights the Cameroon Law Council equally came out with five uh, points communique to put both the both conflicting uh, partners uh, to book, calling on the, the judiciary to take its uh, responsibility and punish uh, the defier. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the case of Douala uh, before Boya, uh, equally when lawyers went on the streets, 